two coasters, a record-breaking hyper, and a woody with the world's best theming. Both of them put Australian coasters on the map and made enthusiasts say, wow. But there can only be one winner. What is Australia's best roller coaster? Is it the ejector-filled DC rivals? Or is it the relentlessly paced Leviathan? It's time for a showdown. Let's talk about DC rivals and Leviathan. It's the ultimate showdown to decide Australia's number one. These two coasters are very different from each other, but when it comes to Australian coasters, it is these two that are constantly debated between as the best coaster in the country. I've always been a rivals man myself, but when I met Coaster Studios earlier in the year, they were absolutely sold on Leviathan. It seems it comes down to what people prefer in a coaster. But for now, we're going to hold an ultimate showdown to decide once and for all which coaster is the better of the two. The stats. DC Rivals is obviously the likely winner here, being Australia's only hyper coaster. It stands 61.6 meters or 202 feet tall with 1,399.9 meters of track. It reaches a top speed of 115 kilometers an hour with a vertical drop angle of 89 degrees. It does not feature any inversions, although that non-inverting loop sure feels like one. Leviathan is definitely a smaller coaster, but its stats are extremely respectable for a wooden coaster. It stands 32 meters or 105 feet tall with 1,000 meters of track. It reaches a top speed of 80 kilometers an hour with a drop angle that I'd estimate to be around 70 degrees, although I can't find a definitive source, so please correct me if I'm wrong. Again, there are no inversions on this ride. For stats, I think the point obviously goes to DC Rivals. No disrespect to Leviathan, but there's no denying that by Australia's standards, Rivals is a beast. The Q and Pre-Show. DC Rivals is set amongst the DC superheroes area of Movie World. Its queue features a series of murals dedicated to some of the most iconic hero and villain rivalries in DC Comics. These artworks are pretty nice and the whole area has a very modern feel, but it's certainly not that impressive compared to some of the better themed rides at Movie World. It's also quite ineffectively shaded and the station building is quite bland. Leviathan, meanwhile, offers an elaborately themed queue placed directly within the ride's layout. It offers fantastic rock work and great attention to detail, good shade, and great views of the ride. But of course, we have to mention the ride's entrance and station, which is an elaborate and beautiful cave with gorgeous lighting, followed by possibly the best themed station in the world. The Leviathan gives a daunting pre-show as you board using wraparound LED screens. It's incredible. A clear point for Leviathan here. DC Rivals is hardly themed at all, while Leviathan is one of the most elaborate and beautiful attractions ever built in Australia. The Trains. DC Rivals features the classic Mark Trains, themed as the Batmobile. They do look particularly sleek. What I love most about these trains is the comfortable lap bar restraints and the fact that the seats are deep enough to keep your feet off the floor, emphasizing the airtime and forces even further. The trains really make you feel like you're at the ride's mercy and I love the intensity that provides. Leviathan runs with the Gravity Group's Timberliner trains, which are also very comfortable. They have a much lower profile than the Mark trains and feature rather heavy but still comfortable lap bars. I absolutely love the Zero car on these trains and they're definitely the better of the two as far as appearance goes. Sitting lower to the track does emphasize Leviathan's speed, but also its roughness. The point goes to DC Rivals for me, purely from a train design standpoint. I love the way Mark's seats are designed to really intensify the experience of their more forceful coasters. The first drop. DC Rivals' first drop is simply unparalleled. The near vertical drop offers sheer ejector airtime in the back seats and the twist halfway down makes it an insane lateral experience as well. That's followed by a super intense pullout into the first camelback. It really slaps and is one of the strongest moments on the ride. And in the backward seats, it's truly unforgettable. Leviathan's first drop is not to be slept on though. It gets the ride off to a very speedy start with some great sustained flow to airtime. The back seats are really excellent on this ride and the first drop is among the better airtime moments in those seats. 
As for the backwards seats, this is definitely a strong start. Backwards airtime is a hard feeling to match. But the point obviously has to go to DC Rivals. It's just such an insane first drop, it would beat most coasters in this department. The airtime. This point is going to come down to a matter of quantity versus quality. DC Rivals has pure ejector over its first drop, the camelback, through the non-inverting loop, and through the bunny hills on the return leg. There's even a nice little pop in the incline dive loop turnaround element. It's definitely the best airtime in Australia, no doubt about it. This ride really tries its utmost to buck you out of the seat, especially in the back. Leviathan, however, is another type of beast. While I'd say most of its airtime is strong floater, the entire layout is a constant barrage of it. In terms of the quantity of airtime, Levy has rivals covered hands down. From the airtime hills to the double down and the first drop, there really is a whole lot of brilliant, often sustained floater to enjoy on this ride. But I think my heart says to give the point to DC Rivals. The airtime on that ride is world class and it's probably that string of bunny hills at the end that makes me give it the win. Hold on a second, if you'd like to get involved in this channel's community, find out more about what I'm posting, and just generally chat coasters, join our Discord, link is in the description. Anyway, back to the video. The intensity. Oh, there's no competition here. DC Rivals is without a doubt one of the most intense coasters I've ever ridden. From its sheer ejector airtime to the insane positives and laterals, Rivals doesn't hold back. The first drop and non-inverting loop are probably the most intense elements I've ever ridden, while the bunny hills are some of the most abrupt airtime you'll find anywhere. Leviathan has a certain level of intensity to it due to its rapid fire pacing, but there's really no competition here. Leviathan's ride experience doesn't offer any moments that come even remotely close to DC Rivals for its pure intensity. It's a more flowing and graceful experience. There's nothing to it that I would describe as absolutely insane. The point goes to DC Rivals, and I think it's a little bit of an unfair matchup in this category. The pacing. DC Rivals maintains its pace reasonably well. There are a lot of really fast elements, but there are a couple of notable dead spots. Particularly the Stengel Dive and the Helix really don't offer much, and they certainly detract from the ride's pacing. Compared to Leviathan, Rivals feels more like a string of elements back to back, where most of them hit, but some of them don't, and those ones are definite dead spots. Leviathan, meanwhile, is just absolutely non-stop. This ride doesn't feel like it slows down once, from drop to breaks. It hurdles through the layout, absolutely darting from one element to the next. That's this ride's greatest strength, and there's no denying it completely outdoes Rivals in this aspect. There is not a single dead spot on this ride. A point for Leviathan. It is one of the best paced coasters I've ever ridden. Best moment. DC Rivals has a couple of candidates for the best moment on the ride, but I'm going with the non-inverting loop. This element is insane, particularly towards the back, where it's a moment of pure ejector airtime as you rocket through the twist. The ride is still carrying a lot of pace at this stage, so it's an incredibly forceful element that will always catch you off guard. You might think that's an easy win, but Leviathan's best moment is the double down, and this element holds its own as one of my favourite elements in Australia as well. It emphasises the ride's pacing with a wild one-two punch of strong floater airtime, it's certainly the best moment of the ride in the backwards seats too, offering the strongest backwards airtime in the entire layout. I absolutely love that double down, but I don't think it's possible to match the non-inverting loop. It's probably the best and most surprising element in Australia. A point for rivals. The operations. I really don't want to give either coaster a point for this. Rivals frustratingly often runs with only one train on its lengthy layout, and even when it does run with two, the operations take forever. The operators are not allowed to open the air gates until everyone has left the platform, and they have to do the seatbelts on your restraints themselves. They consistently stack the second train on the brakes when it's running, which is pretty much unacceptable for such a long ride running only two trains. Leviathan, meanwhile, has... The pre-show. 
Now before I begin this rant, I would like to disclaim that I love Leviathan's pre-show and I wouldn't change it for the world, at least in an aesthetic sense. But my god, it slows down the operations so badly. It really is this ride's one fatal flaw and it results in ridiculous dispatch times that are way beyond times that should ever be reached, even in unusual circumstances. Both rides have awful operations and I dread to give either of them a point here, but I will give it to Rivals. Both are very slow, but Leviathan's pre-show makes the operations just absolutely comical. My first reaction. The last point is going to be for which ride left me with a better first impression. In future videos I'd like to try to upload a live face reaction from a POV I've shot, but obviously I did not get an opportunity to record my first ride on either of these coasters. My first ride on DC Rivals was October 2017. I drove up to the Gold Coast for a day specifically to get on the ride. What I remember of my reaction to my first ride was pure stunned silence. I can still remember the tingles in my hands and feet from the force and just how off guard this ride had caught me. I don't think I managed to process a word until long after I'd left the exit platform. I was truly 100% gobsmacked. My first ride on Leviathan was February 2023. I flew up to the Gold Coast to get on the ride after missing out on it due to its closures during the opening week. I have a habit of laughing on the final breaks when I've enjoyed a ride, and Leviathan definitely got a good laugh out of me. I think it was the only way I could respond after how rapid fire the ride had been. But in terms of which coaster left the more lasting first impression, it has to be DC Rivals. That coaster changed the game for me and opened my eyes to how forceful and incredible a coaster can be. So it seems that we have a clear winner. DC Rivals is the number one coaster in Australia. Let me know if you disagree with my verdict in any of the categories and tell me the reasons why you prefer either Rivals or Leviathan in the comments. Also let me know which coasters you would like to see battle it out next. Thank you so much for watching, please consider liking and subscribing and I will see you next time.